Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daniela and on this channel we make crafts and cocktails. I am so excited you're here and if you're new, I'm just as grateful for you. So, let's get started. Cheers! Alright guys, I feel like I have something for everyone's style in this video. So this is a like fun and colorful but kind of farmhouse look for a spring sign that says spring has sprung. I started with one of these St. Patrick's Day welcome signs from the dollar store and I decided not to even mess with the back of it and just move ahead with the front of it. Um, you can always hot glue some um, craft paper to the back like Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs to make it look finished but I was just honestly just ready to get this project done and I was just not in the mood to go through the extra step. So I'm using this Waverly chalk paint. Oh, I think it's in the color moss. And so I honestly didn't love it. So I added some green acrylic paint to give it a little bit of extra color, a little more brightness. It was just like too dull for me. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I definitely love color. So I added some green paint, kind of thought about it for a minute added a little more and then you'll see here in a minute that I also end up distressing it with another color. So once it's mostly dry I do take some Waverly white chalk paint and a chippy brush and I am just kind of distressing it a little bit further and this definitely gave me the vibes I was hoping for. It's got some toned down colors, some bright green and some of that whiteness to give it kind of a distressed look and then I was finally happy with how the background of my piece was looking. So then it was time to decorate. So I knew I was going to write something or paint something on it, but I was afraid of taking up space. So I ended up deciding to add my flowers first. You could do this either way, it would work. But I did it this way so I knew I wouldn't take up too much space. So I am using, is this a lily, a tiger lily? I'm not sure. And a rose and just covering up where those holes were in the beginning of the sign. And I actually just used the leaves and the petals to cover up directly where the holes were so I don't have to worry about it. Then I put down some blue painter tape extremely lightly. I honestly like barely pressed down whatsoever because I'm not using it for like to butt paint up against. I'm just using it as a guideline so that my words are all evenly the same height. So when I start painting, I mixed a bit of yellow, white, and some pastel pink paint. I didn't want it to be perfectly yellow. It does end up mostly coming out like a pastel yellow, but in my head, it made more sense to do it this way. So I just start painting on the letters. I'm kind of a go for it type of girl, so I didn't really sketch it out first. But absolutely, if you're nervous about your words, you should totally do that. I just, like I said, I'm just kind of a go for it type of person. I also want you to know that I decided to hand paint these words for all my friends out there who don't own a Cricut and can't make a stencil or a perfectly printed word out of vinyl, so I thought this would be a nice option for you. Also, if you're nervous about a paintbrush, you can totally use a paint marker. I definitely considered that, but I just didn't have the color that I wanted for this project. So as you can see, I'm just taking my time because mind you, this is sped up. So I'm just really taking my time and placing out my letters. I've really been into these like tall skinny letters lately. I'm not sure why, but I just kind of think they're fun. I also want to acknowledge that yes, the N and the G are lowercase while the other ones are uppercase. If you know me, I'm kind of a grammar nut, but in reality, just for the sake of the sign, I think it turned out really cute this way. So hopefully it doesn't trigger any of you if you're a language nut like I am. So then I decided to use kind of like a coral orange color just by mixing a few different colors to write has horizontally, well technically vertically, in the middle of my other two words. Then I'm going to finish it off with the word sprung at the end with the same yellow color. Thank you. 
camera, I do end up going over with a second coat in just areas that felt a little transparent. And then I peeled the tape off, which was super easy because like I said, I just went really lightly. Now I'm just taking a long piece of jute cord or twine and wrapping it around the end of my sign just because it felt like it needed a bit of a finishing touch. And I, I also hot glue the end of it to the end of my sign and that's about it. You could add a hanger to this, but I kind of liked it the way it was just resting. So here is how she turned out. I honestly think it turned out super cute and better than I expected because I was really nervous about what to make for this DIY and I love it. I'm so excited to let you guys know that today's video is in collaboration with Megan from The Crafty Quinn. I'll leave her video and info down in my description box, so make sure you go check her out and let her know that I sent you. In fact, it was her idea to come up with today's drink, so let's check out what that was. This is a cucumber lime mint vodka cocktail that um, Megan from the Crafty Quinn sent me in a video on YouTube. I made mine slightly different. They had club soda and simple syrup, but honestly, I don't like club soda. So I picked a key lime um, spritzer from Walmart, and these are actually a lot sweeter than like LaCroix and other ones. So it kind of had that simple syrup already mixed in it. Anyways, what you see here is me muddling some cucumbers, some limes, and some mint all together with the back of my spatula. Um, and then I add a shot and a half of vodka. I like my drinks a bit stronger, and to be honest, after taste testing it, I think I would have gone with two shots the first time, but it was still really delicious, and of course you should make it to your liking. So again, here I am using my Elvis shot glass to add in a shot and a half of vodka. I'm shaking it up as best I can, and then I um, grab a little bit of ice to mix it up with that too. So there I am adding a little bit of ice to my little mason jar shaker, and I end up adding some in my glass as well. I tried getting the cucumbers to stick to the sides because I did that in the video and I thought it looked really cool, but they had one that was square and my glass is kind of rounded, so I think that's why it didn't work. I'm not sure. Um, just so you're aware, I disappeared right now because I'm getting more ice. There we are. So to garnish it, I'm throwing in some fresh cucumber again, some lime. I think I might have just did one lime wedge and some fresh mint. I'm pouring in my muddled mix with the vodka into that and then topping it off with this key lime um, sparkling water or flavored water or whatever you want to call it from Walmart that again is much sweeter than the other ones. All right, guys, I know that this DIY might not be for everyone, but this is my take on a fun and colorful floral wall. If you guys are interested in a um, version that's a little bit less uh, green, I guess, um, you can check out the mini version on the Crafty Quinn's channel. She did like a little mini floral wall that's the size of like a small canvas or a picture frame. It's pretty cute, but I wanted to make a bigger one without breaking the budget and making like honestly it'd be so cool to have a whole wall of this, but even at Dollar Tree prices, I don't feel like buying 8 million flowers. So I made this version just out of the middle part of one of those trifold foam boards that you can get at Walmart, or you could just buy a foam board from Dollar Tree, easy peasy. And I tossed on some of the light green and dark green acrylic paint and I'm just brushing it on. I thought this would give it lots of texture and you wouldn't be able to see the white marks behind all the flowers because it would look more natural with some greenery behind it. Off camera, I cut some really thin strips of some spare foam board that I had to make this rectangle that I measured out to be even on my board. And the reason for this is I'm going to attach some um, little like mirror tiles to it and some tiny, tiny roses. And I felt like they would really drown behind all of the other flowers I'm gonna add. So I thought if I let them pop out a little bit, they would stand out more. So I'm just using my handy dandy hot glue gun and gluing down my little foam board pieces so that I can glue on my mirror and roses on top. So here you can see I'm taking these little teeny tiny roses that come in bunches and these little circular mirror pieces. The circular mirror pieces I got off Amazon. I was actually gonna make some tree dangly things with it, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. Um, but it worked out for this project. I just felt like it needed a little glitz and glam because if you guys know me, you know that I like to be a little bougie in my DIYs. Anyways, these cute little flowers I got actually from my aunt. I think 
they're meant for wedding type of stuff. I'm not sure, but it worked perfectly as spacers for these and I really like how it turned out. So I'm using those and alternating them between the little mirror pieces and I do this all the way around the entire border of this project. Once I was done with that, I took a bunch of different flowers. These are mostly Dollar Tree flowers, but a few of the bigger ones are from Walmart. I did cave and spend like three bucks on a couple of bunches, but they were either like bigger or nicer quality or they came with more. So I didn't mind too much and I was picky about which ones I wanted. So I cut off the stems to the very, very uh, top of the flower and then I just start gluing them all down. As I go on here, I do end up kind of filling in little tiny spaces with some of these little daffodils and then these other like light green flowers. I actually have no idea what kind they are, um, but I end up filling small spaces with those as well. I'm trying to be careful during this process that I'm not overshadowing the mirror and the roses too much. It does end up overshadowing it a bit, which I expected, but I really didn't want it to be too far away from the edge where you can see a green border on the inside, and I didn't want it to go so far over the edge that it was covering the mirror and the roses. So I'm doing my best to balance that all out here while also balancing the colors. The color scheme I used was kind of like a pale yellow, pale pink, cream, and white type of color, um, and, and definitely some pinks in there as well. I also tried to use a combination of different types of flowers um, just to give it a bit of variety. When I had the center completely filled in, I wanted to do the edges. I thought I would have enough flowers to do the entire outer edge and maybe do darker flowers, but then, honestly, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. So I just decided to go in with some brighter flowers. So I picked out a, a poppy, I'm not sure. No, that's not a poppy, I don't know. But I picked out some bright orange flowers um, and some yellow flowers and some pink flowers to add in the corners. So I have them on opposite or diagonal corners and then, as you'll see in a minute here, I end up adding some greenery to the other corners that weren't covered. I think this with the, just the plain green background, and you'll see me distress it in a minute, but before the distressing, I think this is super fun and tropical for summer, but it was a little bit too summery of a feeling than it was for like spring, so I do end up distressing it a little bit with some chalk paint, which you'll see here in a second. Here's the area where, or the area, here's the time, the place, the, I don't know, the moment when I decided to add greenery in the corners, and I'm actually using greenery from several different types of picks. I didn't want to limit it to one kind just because I used such a big variety of flowers, and I also noticed that some of them were different sizes, so it felt like one corner didn't have as much as the other one, so then I ended up adding these super long ones from the lilies that expanded beyond the corners, and that definitely helps tie it all together. This is when I add my Waverly White chalk paint. Um, I'm just using a chippy brush to really get it across, and I go in the direction of the board as if it were a frame. So like the shorter edges, I do vertically and the other ones horizontally. I thought this would give it a more unique look and also kind of make it, I don't know, make it make more sense when I hang it up so it looks a little bit more like a intentional frame. Um, so anyways, yeah, I just take some of that white chalk paint and I'm just distressing all around my foam board to dull it down a bit so that the green isn't so bright and vibrant. 
You can do this to your liking. You could also use a different under base color, like a navy blue would be pretty, or a black, or whatever you want. But I actually really love how this turned out. Like I said, I'm a really colorful person, and so I love all the brightness and colorfulness and the little bit of glam that this piece has. What do you guys think? Okay, I just want to show off a little bit of Megan from the Crafty Quinn's page. She has been blowing up recently. You need to check her out. She's got so many fun, unique DIYs and home renovation ideas. So please give her a click in my description where I will leave her link. Hey guys, wanted to pop in one more time and just say if you like it here, if you like me, my DIYs, you love my cocktails, or anything in between, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and like up this video. Cheers! Alright guys, we are down to our last DIY and this is not one you want to miss. This is a gorgeous candle holder. I know I've made like a million candle holders, but who doesn't love candles we have so many candles in our house but anyways i'm taking this little like fish bowl candle holder thing that i got from the dollar tree and some plain green acrylic paint i didn't mix anything into it and a medium sized round brush the reason i'm using this instead of a tiny one is that when you start it from the tip that's kind of pointy and just kind of lay it flat as you bring it down it gets nice and fat in the middle like a leaf naturally would so it goes from a point to a little bit thicker, to a little bit thinner as you lift it up, almost like an almond shape. So I go around the bottom of my candle holder and do this. I do realize that after a while I was resting it on the newspaper and I was smudging it, so I'm just trying to fix those edges up here. And I do let it dry for a few moments while I, um, well, I don't know what I'm doing to be honest, but when, after it dries, I add a second coat. Then, while that dries, I am hot gluing two little tumbling tower blocks or small Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree together. Um, I'm not staining them because, honestly, you're not going to see them much anyways. And then I'm taking some E6000 glue because we know that hot glue doesn't really like to stick to glass. And placing that in the bottom of my little fish bowl. And then I'm putting some E6000 glue on the bottom of this little candle holder. This mini one that came... Um, as just clear glass in a pack of three. I've used it in other DIYs, but I spray painted this one gold just to give it some extra shine. You don't see it too much once it's finished, but I still think it's a nice touch. Then I use my leftover dried citrus from an old DIY and surround it all around that um, candle holder in the middle, making sure it's still staying in the nice center of the piece. And um, if you guys wanna know how to make these so simple, slice up some citrus, throw it in the oven at 250 for like two hours and you've got some dried citrus. This is an extremely easy DIY, but honestly I love how it looks and I think it's kind of perfect for spring with that added touch of the painted greenery on the sides. I hope you guys like it. Was anyone else shook when they found out the Crafty Quinn's name isn't?